Well, what a great morning we've already had. Isn't it been incredible? Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. I, I want to begin this morning by a little confession. I have a condition. And, uh, well, I have actually many conditions, but one I, I thought I'd talk about this morning. I have an acute case of versitis. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Um, I, I didn't say bursitis. I said versitis. When I was five years old, my mother started my whole family, my brothers and I, in a Bible memorization program. And we had 12 Bible verses a week we had to memorize. We had a hero that came in on Friday night. Uh, we had 12 weeks of doing that, 12 weeks off, 12 weeks doing that, 12 weeks off. In the course of my lifetime, I've learned a lot of Bible, what? Verses. verses. I'm a slow learner, but uh, a few years ago, all of a sudden it hit me, sweet, in the course of your life, you've learned a lot of Bible verses. You've memorized Bible verses, but you've never once memorized a Bible story. Have you? I think, well, you know, I do know. I do know stories, and, and I do know some, and I got to think, well, what do you know, story, what stories do you know the best? And I got to think, you know, well, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in the, see, we went to the same Sunday school, but I learned that from a song, and, 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 and I, oh, wait a minute. And, you know, I, in the past, had made fun. Here I talk about, here we're living in a Google world where, where everything is digital and electronic, and here we are still trying to teach the Bible with flannel graphs and chalkboards, and I wish I could take those words back. Because I look in my past, and you know those stories, and I know the best. Guess where I learned them from? Those flannel graph people and those chalk... If it hadn't been for them, I would have a more acute case of versitis than I already do. So here, here's what I want to, to leave you with this morning. I only have 13 minutes, and is, how, where is it? How come it's not, huh? Okay. At any rate, there's no countdown, so I was hoping on a countdown. And I got five minutes left. Okay, that was, <laughs> that was a quick eight minutes. But, um, here, here's, I want to leave you with a, 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 here's how I am trying to deal with this versitis in my own. See, the Bible was not written in, in verses. It was written in stories. It was letters. It was songs. It was hymns. It, and, and we got to start reconnecting with the Bible as it was written. Now, we're having the, the 400th anniversary of the King James coming up in 2011. Um, 1611, 2011, King James, that, that translation is the one that put it into chapters and verse. And I'll tell you how acute our versitis is. Remember when Gene Peterson came out with a message? His first volume didn't come out with chapters and verse, but we all wanted it. So we made the next ones. Now, here's, um, here, here's, so here's what I'm trying to do to my life. Um, I have an apple and an orange. In, in the past, uh, you have, if you want to brown nose your teacher, butter up your teacher, you give your teacher what? An apple. Actually, we should have been giving him an orange. Um, because here's what we did in a Gutenberg world. See, if I say, if you're born before 1973, you're an immigrant. How many immigrants do we have? See, we're native Gutenbergers. If you're born after 1973, it's a metaphor. You're a, a native. Um, you're a googly. It's now a Google world. In a Gutenberg world, everything we touched, we turned into an orange, not an apple. See, we didn't know how to do apple. We didn't even like apple. We gave teachers apples, but how do you eat an apple? You eat an apple whole. If I, I take this apple, I put it in my mouth, and and it squirts out stuff. You know, it's a little messy. It runs down here. But that's not how we treated life. We treated each other, and we treated everything. We treated it more like an orange. How do you eat an orange? You peel it. And then it comes in these nice little silos, these little segments. And see, that's what we did in the Gutenberg world. We turned everything into an orange. And, and we, we, we even theology. We don't have theology. We have Christology, soteriology, eschatology, pneumatology, ecclesiology. We did ology really well. But see, everything we touched, we turned into an orange. And that's what we did to the Bible. We turned it into an orange. We took it apart. 
We separated it. We chaptered and versed it. And here we are with our acute case of versitis. So here I am in the midst of Microsoft telling you to think Apple. Um, now, Gary, I got permission to do this if he said, if you tell him to buy Microsoft stock, <laughs> you can tell him to think Apple. But I want, I want to get a little serious here. I mean this. See, we even turned each other into oranges. Now, somebody else is going to tell you here to think orange. We've got to think both orange and apple, but we learned how to do orange really well. You don't think we did orange with people? Let me tell you, one of the hardest things in my life now, it's a spiritual discipline, is everybody I meet, I have to think apple. They, no, because everybody I meet, here's what this Versitis did to me, this, this taking everything apart and, and dissecting it. And it, it, when I meet somebody for the first time, I immediately size them up. I immediately take them apart. I immediately decide what I like about them, what I don't like about them, and and I treat them like an orange instead of appreciating them whole, celebrating them whole. I, my oldest son here, Thane, is series 18. I have two kids still at home. If 13, 11, my 13-year-old comes home from school and says, we studied birds with a Harvard biologist. My 11-year-old comes home and says, we studied birds with a naturalist from the Audubon Society. Immediately, who do you think got the better education? With a Harvard biologist, but let's talk about the bird they studied. My 13-year-old studied bird with a Harvard biologist, a bird in a pan a dead bird in a pan. And they spent the whole day taking it. See, but wait, wait a minute, you can't take something apart without killing it. Now there's a time for a dead bird in a pan. It's called Sunday dinner and fried chicken is what it's called. But, <laughs> but, but there's also another way of approaching life and approaching each other. And we need the dead bird in the pan sometimes, but our primary approach to life. See, now my 11-year-old studied a bird a lot, with the naturalist from Audubon Society. They studied a live bird. But first of all, here's the, here's the point. To study that live bird, they had to, my 11-year-old had to go in a bus to go to where the bird is and interact with the bird in its natural environment. If anybody got cut up, it was what? My son as it's interacting with in its natural environment. We gotta start thinking, not just, see, orange is left brain, apple is right brain. God gave us two brains for a reason. But part of our challenge is to start thinking apple. Because the future is as much apple as it is orange. Now, I wanna end with a little apple exercise. Would you all stand? And here's what I want to do. I want, I want everybody to hold hands. I want no separation. And we're going to do a little, come on, no aisle here. I, I, this is the Pacific Northwest. Everybody has a boat, right? I don't have a boat, but I have a friend who has a boat. That's better. They tell me when a sailboat, every, is everybody connected? Okay. Everybody almost, all right. They tell me that you know when a sailboat is maxed out in the wind, when there's total wholeness, there's total integration of that, that boat and the wind, when that happens, literally that boat hydroplanes. Do you know that? A boat maxed out in the wind, hydroplanes, and you know it's hydroplaning when you hear the hum. That's totally organic. That's apple. It's apple and orange brought together. So here's what we're going to do. <laughs>